Hello and welcome back to part two in our ML.Markov tutorial series in Max MSP. If you've not seen part one, please go and have a look at that first. But for now, we're going to be cracking straight on. Last time we came up with this patch here, which enables a few ML.Markov objects to learn from MIDI data and be able to output a continuous stream of new notes of varying pitch and velocity values and also has the ability to play multiple notes at the same time to form chords, again based on the training data. So as we promised last time, I'm now going to be getting it um, recognising not only different note lengths, but also the delay between new note onsets, so that it can sound a lot more musical. So let's start with the note onsets first. So the way that we would um, do that, if we're thinking about it, is we'll take these here, which are the note uh, note ons from the MIDI data, and then we'd send them. We want to time the delay between them, so we'll do a timer object. Now, timer typically works with milliseconds, but as we know, because we're playing the MIDI file extremely quickly, MIDI uh, milliseconds aren't really going to cut it. So we're going to want to do at format samples, and then sending into there, we're going to want a couple of bangs. So we make a B object, which creates two bangs whenever it receives anything in its inlet. Uh, the first bang we're going to want um, triggering the end of the timer. So it sends out the time that it's just um, recorded. And then the next bang is then going to restart it. So as soon as a new note on set comes in, it will send out the time between that and the previous note on set and then get the timer starting again. Um, but what if we get multiple notes coming in at the same time, like we do with the chord um, patching over here? We don't want to have, say, four or five different times being sent out that are all extremely small, because that wouldn't be that wouldn't sound any good at all. So we're going to want to do sort of the inverse of this, where we're gating it, so we're only listening to the first note in a chord or the first onset, because that's still an onset, regardless of how many notes are being played. So we're going to want to gate it here, so gate with one outlet that is initially set to being open, with the second argument of one doing that. And then we're going to want to take the note on values here, put them into a trigger. We'll do one zero i, and that i could be a bang, it doesn't really matter either way because it's going into a bang object anyway. And tidy that up a little bit. Send that into the gate and then immediately once it's read a value close the gate and then very quickly after that reopen the gate so quickly enough that any values that are being played at the same time will be ignored but any additional ones considering we're playing it really quickly um, will be let through so we're going to want to do the same thing as over here do a delay at delay time 10 samples send that into there and then that there, let's tidy this up a little bit. That's, oh, that looks all right. And bring that over there, why not? So that's good. And now because timer, you normally take obviously the times out of the left um, outlet, but because we're using a different format, those will come out of the right outlet, as it says there, formatted values of times. And we're going to want to take those into our new ml.markov that will be trained on those. But again, we're going to want to gate it so that we don't get any ridiculously long values. Say you, you train it on one bit of data and then you wait a really long time before training it on the next bit of data. Um, we don't want that timer to then output something ridiculous like 30 seconds because having that in the middle of all of your training data would be no good at all. So we're going to want to gate that again, doing just single gate like this with a less than object so we want the value to be less than let's say 200,000 samples so in this case it'll be what four seconds or something like that and depending on the data that you're working with if you want um, values of more than four seconds to be able to go through then by all means change that but for my purposes that's worked quite well when I've been testing it um, so that's great. So now we're getting values coming out of there that are within an acceptable range. And when I was testing this, because we're playing it stupid quick, I was actually getting some problems where the 
there didn't seem to be enough resolution with the speed that it was being played at, so the Markov object was getting quite confused and spewing out all sorts of strange times. So I had to slow it down a little bit. It's still, I'm still playing it really, really quickly. We're going to be playing it 2480, which is 20 times quicker than the normal speed. Um, but it's still, you know, it's still quite quick, but noticeably slower when we play the MIDI files. So then we're going to take the values coming out of there, multiply them by 20, because they will be sample values that are 20 times slow, uh, 20 times quicker than we actually need. So we'll make them 20 times longer. Um, and then send those into another ml.markov with our same receive that we set up last time, so that it receives all the nice configuration data. And that will then train this on the delay between note onsets. And finally, the numbers that we get out of that, once we start um, generating new material, we want to translate those from samples to milliseconds. And then the values from that will change the metronome argument up there so that it controls when new onsets are happening. So that's half the battle done right there. That's all of that bit done for new note on sets. But now we want to do note length. And that's a little bit more complicated because obviously MIDI being polyphonic, note lengths are not going to be as easy to judge as just time between new note on sets. So we're going, because as I say, we're dealing with polyphonic stuff, we're going to want to build a patch for poly tilde. So we're going to want to create a new patcher, do an in one because as we know with poly tilde we don't use inlet and outlet we use in and out and we're going to be taking in the midi pairs here so we're going to want to unpack those unpack zero zero because it's both integers we're going to discard the pitch because we don't need it we're just going to be focusing on the velocity so cell zero so when that is going to be a note off a value of zero we'll get a bang out of here and when it's not zero, i.e. a note on, whatever velocity that is, it will be sending that out of here. And we're going to want to make that a bang as well. So send that into a bang object there. And do another timer. If I can spell timer, that always helps. Um, do another timer object again at format samples with the bang from the um, note ons turning it on. And the bang from the note offs reporting the time that has just been measured and sending that out of our outlet out one so that's nice and simple little poly tilde object that we can now save again in our file path call it whatever you like i call it midi length and yes i want to replace that that's fine and then over here we'll create a poly tilde object and load that in midi length Ooh, what on earth did i do there I did the semicolon, that's what I did. Uh, yeah, MIDI length, and I'm doing 64 voices. That should be perfectly adequate for most things, unless you're working with black MIDI or anything like that. So uh, we'll put that there. And as we do with poly tilde, we're going to be taking in the MIDI pairs, but we need to do prepend MIDI note before we do that, so that it knows to allocate them to new voices. And also to help with that, so that we don't have to deal with um, note allocation with this poly or anything inside that, we will do the good old target zero and steal one, which does all of that hard work for us. Send those both into poly tilde and make sure that they are load banged when the patch is opened. Lovely. So now we've got those values coming out of the poly tilde object. And we've got another slight issue where, let's say, we have multiple notes um, finishing at the same time. Say you've got one note that's played and held, and then another note is played while the first note is still being played, but they're both released at the same time. How is Polly, how is our patching going to account for that? Because we're going to want to um, sort them in the particular order so that the longest notes are considered first, because obviously they were played before the shorter notes. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to group them together again in exactly the same way as with the chords over here. So we can take these three objects and duplicate them over here, send that into there. So it's going to group them together um, and bang that group out after 10 samples. So it only considers um, notes that are all being played at the same time. 
And then instead of getting the length of that, we're then going to want to sort all objects in that group, all entries in that group. And by default, ZL sorts, sorts things, sorts lists um, in ascending order, but we don't want that. We want it descending order because we want the longest values first. So that'll be the highest numerical values. So we do a load mess of minus one and send that into the right inlet. I really can't type today, apologies. <laughs> so that will then be sorted the way we want it. And then we're going to iterate those out with zl.iter with an argument of one. So then it sends them all out one after the other into our Markov object. And once again, because that the times are going to be 20 times quicker than we need them, we multiply them by 20 and then create another ml.markov object right here. Beautiful. And once again, translate from samples to milliseconds and those final values that we get out there will then control the duration of the notes that we are making. Perfect. So now finally we connect up the bang from the metro into our two new ml.markov objects and then sort that out so it's a little bit nicer. Perfect. Make sure that that is load banged and make sure that that is load messaged. And my cat is snoring in the background because he's very inconsiderate. Don't know if it'll pick up on the microphone. We'll find out in post. So let's train this now on um, Cledaloo because that's got a nice load of different values in. So get that playing. <laughs> Was a bit loud sorry rip headphone users so then we'll get that training build it and before the build button worked instantly but now you won't be able to see it on the screen capture but my mouse has turned into the spinning beach ball of death uh, because it's having to deal with quite a lot more numbers a lot more processing so it does take a short amount of time to get it all trained up um, usually not too long when you're just dealing with one piece like this but in a minute I will then show there we go it's done I'll show how we can actually train it on multiple pieces at a time which can sound pretty good um, but for now we've just got Cled Loon we'll get that playing see what that sounds like lovely. So that's a lot more musical than it was before and we can do tons and tons of lovely stuff with that including training it on multiple files at once. Now this is going to um, take quite a lot longer once it starts training so I will probably skip ahead so you don't have to wait with me for about five minutes but if we co connect um, copies of all of these into just our sequence object tidy these up see what that looks like that's not too bad um, and then it's not resetting the mark of objects each time um, and depending on which one you train it on first that can actually um, get it sort of stuck in a loop certainly with the time-based elements um, for instance I tried training it first on the the gymnopody and then on the first Debussy piece and then on Claire de Lune and it seemed to, even though it was changing between the pitch values of the three quite a lot, it stayed within the time-based values of the gymnopathy quite a lot, um, which wasn't very interesting. And it depends entirely on the overlap between the pieces that you choose in terms of their time-based elements and their pitch-based elements. So I'm going to train this on the first Debussy piece first. And as you saw there, there was a bit of a delay between me pressing it and it actually appearing on there. And that's because we've got quite a lot more Markov objects that are having to deal with that. So we'll play Children's Corner first. Lovely. Uh, 
and then play, clicking on it down here, Led Loon. And finally the Gymnopedy. Right, and I will see you in a minute. I'm going to get it building now, and it will take a few minutes' time. I will see you when that is done. And we're back. There you go. I needed to put one of those SpongeBob memes in, didn't I, really? Twelve years later, or whatever. Anyway, let's have a listen to what that sounded like. So you can hear that um, it's swapping between the three pieces quite uh, quite regularly. And it seemed to get a little bit stuck with the rhythm just in the, you know, quick semi-quavers or whatever. So it wasn't as interesting to listen to from a time-based time perspective. But still, you get the idea. So that is there. You can download it, as usual, from my website. Have a lot of fun with it. Plug in different MIDI files, find some interesting combinations. It won't tra take as long to train as for you as it did for me just now. It normally is quite a lot quicker. I think it's partly because, obviously, I'm doing screen capture and recording my voice at the same time. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that is that. Um, we've still got another video to go with this. There's more that we can do with this. I'm going to, next time turn it into uh, an abstraction, so a standalone object that we can load with its own user interface in Bpatcher, and add a few other little quality of life improvements, like an ability to change the speed, uh, the overall speed of it once it's been trained, and being able to swap between playing the times that it's been trained on, and also just going back to a constant metro speed, in case that sounds better for certain purposes. And also giving it the ability to have different parts of the patch being trained on different pieces. So not just it all being trained on one piece after another, but having, say, the pitch-based elements being trained on one piece and the time-based elements being trained on another. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like, comment and share as usual. And I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching.